Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome back to the Golden Dawn, led by Bahadur. Tyana Greyblood has been eliminated. Her people, my vassal, or food for the Radiant. Beneath, we see the opportunity to befriend a potential free city, a future vassal to come, to join the likes of Kilval. But, apart from that, we're preparing for war against Alipavar the Destroyer. Time has come to contest Fangir's friendship and strong alliance with both the Radiant and the Arcanist, we have to make some moves. I'm a little concerned with Fangir's progress over here. I'm also a little concerned about the fact that our military strength is still 8 out of 9. Currently, that's the bottom of the pile, right? There aren't 9 factions anymore. There's only 8, and we're number 8. So, not a very good feeling. But I'm sure we'll be fine. I'm sure we'll be just fine. Up top over here, Sunrise is recruiting a couple of additional units down over here. Brilliantium is establishing its market alongside the Mint up at Sunrise. That should help our economy. And here at Dondell, we're continuing to establish our Town Hall upgrade so we can secure better defenses. This outpost that belonged to Alipavar has been taken, so that's good to see. But I'm still a little concerned about the situation at Dondell because as you can see, Alipavar has quite a few stacks just roaming around without giving a damn about where they're going, right? So the threat's everywhere, and uh, it really is quite far-reaching. That is the farthest extent, I think, of the Altar of Destruction, which has a ridiculously high fortification strength as well, largely because they managed to secure the Ruins Peak, which is actually giving them plus fortification health for each quarry in the city domain. So when we attack, the first thing we're going to want to do is probably capture and release this Ancient Wonder so we can reduce the strength of the fortifications here and take the Altar of Destruction without having to wait like 20 turns to actually take it. Um, that aside, obviously, we'll be at war with a few others, but they're a bit more distant. Soul Vault is all the way here, the Father's Rest is all the way here, and uh, the Radiant actually, you know, is a bit of a buffer for us. So that works out for us. It's Alipavar that I'm worried about. Nonetheless, enough planning. Let's get to acting, shall we? What do we got over here? Orders required for you? Well, you're actually staying put, I think. We don't need to send everybody down over here. We've got Bahadur looking to make first contact. In fact, can we? No, we can't. Any of you guys? No? Able to? No? Okay. I was hoping to pull it off this turn, but Bahadur will do exactly that. But up top over here, these guys, I suppose, can reposition themselves and try and see what's going on beyond Raghash at the Altar of Destruction. I don't know if my vassals are actually going to join in the fighting. Chances are they won't, but... Uh, we can hope, one can dream. Otherwise, our scout over here is actually going to pull back towards Fangir's territory to see how they're doing. Because they got dragged into these wars. They're actually fighting the Elder Dragons. Uh, so we'll see how they're doing, and uh, hopefully not too well, right? Hopefully not too well. They, of course, have the good fortune of not being as close to Alipavar as we were. But with that said, they're not that far either. Though, of course, Alipavar was probably distracted by the situation up over here. Meanwhile, the Fireforge Stone has been acquired. This was part of our quest for our... Uh, Taliqua, who now has a wonderful new weapon that we should actually take a look at again. The Fireforge Stone reduces the draft cost for unit recruitment, which is going to be absolutely huge. But taking a look at Taliqua over here, we can see the High Scimitar is going to be replaced with the Executioner, which as you can see does a lot of damage because it's got uh, that charge strike on it. But it has a chance to kill Tier 1 to Tier 3 units instantly based on how much damage has already been done to the target. So that's going to be extremely helpful at times. Let's get the Executioner on there. Unfortunately, we cannot ride a mount while having such a massive weapon. So, you know, that's that. But uh, otherwise, I think I quite prefer having the uh, Executioner here. That does change our uh, income situation a bit, but I, I don't mind. Our, our gold is looking all right. It's not amazing, our economy, but it's looking all right. Either way, we've also leveled up over here. So, Taliqua, what to do with you? I'm kind of tempted to chase after some of our support abilities here. Restore is always helpful, right? That healing and regeneration is always quite nice. Shepherd is also good. While Army Leader, all units with Evolve in the Army have reduced upkeep and better defense and resistance. Not that many evolving units in her stack right now, so probably not worth it. Twin Awakened target from the unit and another non-awakened unit within two hexes becomes awakened for three turns. That's not too shabby. That's not too shabby at all. Already has Awakened which only targets the friendly, the one friendly unit. Hmm. This increases the reach a little bit. Restore is nice, Twin Awaken is nice, and there's, of course, the option to get uh, more health as well. No. No, there is not. Not just quite yet. We need figure two. Eventually. All right, fair enough. 
We need one more support skill to unlock that. So let's go ahead and pick up Restore. I think that's the right call right now. We'll chase after Twin Awaken afterwards. Let's confirm this. And that's Taliqua leveled up. Otherwise, we're staying put, trying to clear out the uh, Iron Deposit over here. And then come back around and clear out the Mana Node as well. Before we start dealing with uh, Alipavar and all that good stuff. Heroes offer to join. I assume it's not an actual new hero. We've seen all these guys before. Yes, we have. So we can ignore this. I suppose I could inspect... Isaiah the Veil. He still seems like the most likely to be picked up. So let's take a look. I'm not going to recruit him because he's very expensive. But what do you have? The Staff of Spirit. Decent bit of damage output. Nothing else. But you've got Channel Power. Magic attacks gain plus 80% damage until the end of the next turn. That's not bad. Inspiring Leader is alright. And Restore. I mean, we like that. We know that much. But uh, still not interested in investing our entire economy in a single new hero. In comes a call to war. We're going to ignore this because it's not going to break our pact to do so. So, yeah, declining that. But pretty soon, well, we're not going to ally those guys, but pretty soon we're going to get some alliances going. Call to war against Fangir. Now, this one's tempting, but Fangir does have allies, so they'll get dragged in. We'll be in trouble. Ooh, declining will break our defensive pact with Kralik of your... Oh... This is interesting. This is interesting. So, Fangir is the aggressor in this war, meaning Kralikavir actually needs our help. Well, alright, here we'll decide later. Hang on a second. Here we'll decide later. Because it's time for us to make some moves that I was hoping to hold off for some time, I think. We'll still have a bit of time. We'll still have a couple turns, but uh, we got to make some big, big moves. Big moves. Uh, good news here with this vassalage of Raghash. Sounds good to me. They're providing a bit of gold and stuff to us. We've declined a call to war. Yep, all good. That is how I honor my oaths. Thank you for asking. And that's our turn done. Jeez. All right. Things are really heating up. Things are really heating up in the Crucible here. God, I'm so nervous. I wish Fangir wasn't making so much progress in terms of uh, making friends. If he wasn't, then I'd be feeling a lot better with regards to uh, our position amongst the three non-Elder Dragon factions. But uh, but he is, and so here we are, in a touch of trouble. In a touch of trouble. First things first, let's head down underground and see if we can't make contact with this free city without having to push too far in. Because I want to be able to pull back out. Woundheart? Hello. Yeah, they're a free city. They have made contact with some others. We need a Whispering Stone to deliver over here. We have some Imperium available. We can secure a Whispering Stone up over here for 125 or down over here. Oh, we already have Diplomatic Focus, actually. Our faction started with it. So, 125 isn't all that much to invest. I'm feeling like it's the right call. Yeah, sure. Let's go for it. Diplomatic Channels. Secure that. Additional Whispering Stone. And we should now be able to give it to you. Improve our relations. Boost allegiance. I don't think it's necessary. Four turns to the Pact of Cooperation. And now we can actually start taking a look at some of these options over here, like um, tributaries. Vassals grant us extra gold. Actually, that's maybe not a bad idea. We've got two. We're about to have a third. So that's not insignificant. Um, Order Empire skill. I kind of wanted that a while ago, didn't I? Just to get the extra experience for some of our units. And there's Right of Allegiance. Instantly gain 20 allegiance with all free cities. I don't think that's actually worth the investment because free cities are just so rare. Even just having one isn't really isn't really enough. But you know what? Let's get tributaries. 150 Imperium, I think, is a worthwhile investment. 87 gold becomes what? 107. Like, that's not nothing, and it's going to become 117 when Woundheart becomes our vassal as well. Either way, we've uh, touched base over here. Let's go ahead and pull back. Ah, we can't get out of here. God damn it. <laughs> just short. That's okay. I wanted to get myself into a position to prepare for our uh, war to come, and that's the war, of course, against uh, Alipavar. Well, and all of his buddies as well, but you know what I mean. You, meanwhile, are going to come through over here. How are you looking? Almost topped up. If I creep up over here, I risk battle. Really? Really, R4 versus these three? I mean, they're they're three bone wyverns. I can, I can see why it's a bit of a challenge. If I send you up over there, it's a low-risk battle, so... We'll get these stacks collected. Dondell, let's go ahead and build our... What? Do I want a Caltrop stash? Stonemason, get the Lightforge going. Just trying to figure out what the right call here is. 
just trying to figure out what the right call here is, because uh, Dondell might be in a lot of trouble. Granted, this outpost is being lost. This is our weakest city, though, right? So, a little concerned. Just a little concerned. We have a decent bit of gold. We have a decent bit of gold. If I build another farm... No, we need another two farms to secure the boost on the stonemason. And do we have any farmlands available? We have one here, two here. Yeah, so eventually we could boost it. The shrine will take one turn and boost our mana income. That does feel like a good idea, especially because we have so many summoned units and more to come. So, sure. Let's go ahead and get the shrine going. And separately, let's also recruit... I'm thinking a Daylight Spear. Chaplain with a 16 Spirit Blast, Healing Prayer, and Bless. Sun Priest, similar Spirit Blast, but Twin Awakening and Mending Awakening. Fine. Chaplain it is. We need another Chaplain, I think. Alright. That's feeling alright. Otherwise, we have... Summon Wyvern Fledgling being queued up. We'll get that next turn. Make this into a proper full stack, right? And we'll have two stacks up over here and two stacks down over here as well soon. Our scout is going to keep moving. Let's go. And you, my good friend, are going to come up to here so you can actually heal up. Because again, Ashlands don't heal us. They don't heal us at all. Orders required up over here. You're good to stay put. Orders required over here. You're staying put as well. Thank you. And all the way over here. Ah, yes, of course. Our added daylight spear that we brought in. Jeez, I mean, is it time to build another stack over here potentially? Might not be a terrible idea. You know what? Yeah, sure. Let's go for it. Let's bring you down over here. Just to provide some support to Sunrise, let's get you recruiting an additional chaplain. No. Let's get another Daylight Spear coming from here. And then down over at Brilliantium, we can take a look at recruiting a chaplain as soon as we can afford it. Because we can do them down here as well, which is why I'd rather do the chaplain here. Five turns, though, so it'll be a bit of time. It'll be quite a bit of time. After the market, we could take a look at the Light Forge. It'll help with the draft income, right? So I think that'll be the right call. And money's looking, money's looking okay now. Staves of Mending is ready to go. I don't see any reason to wait. Get the unit enchantment going. It'll make these guys faithful. And it'll reduce their unit upkeep as a result. And it'll give us Mending Touch as well. A bit of uh, cost to our mana economy, but I think that's okay. Let's go ahead and enchant. I think it's the right call here. Did it replace their staffs or something? What what changed there? I didn't, didn't catch it that time. It's okay. Heroes offer to join. We can ignore. Spells ready to launch. We can ignore. And a trade proposal. What's happening here? An alliance. Is it time to pull the trigger? Is it time to pull the trigger? I think it might be, folks. I think it might be. You know what? It's a deal. We join Sansevar the Radiant. Rank 1. Military ranking 3. A good person to have as our friend. I am glad to see the bonds we have forged are stronger, Elder Dragon Bahadur. Let us work toward a brighter age for both of us. Indeed. Goodbye. Received another trade proposal. This is from Bozarkan. Another alliance. It's a deal. Now's the time, right? Pulling the trigger on all of these at the same time. Call to war. Can I ignore that for the time being? I'd like to secure an alliance with uh, the Grove Tender over here if possible. Negotiate. Pose an alliance. Cost a lot of gold. That'll cost a lot of gold. So then with regards to your call to war here, I'm afraid I must decline. Pact will not be broken. There are no additional penalties if we decline. And so, we decline. Yes, we decline. Very well. Other rulers declared a friendship. What do we got going on over here? Fangir and the Grove Tender. Good to know. We declined a call to war. Yup. Fair enough. Goodbye. And a new rally has started. We should probably actually invest in this one. Not a lot of very high tier units. It'll be kind of expensive. And we can only really get two units. We only have four recruitment points. Right. I'm so used to my other playthrough where things are really far along and we can recruit so many units all at once. And your economy is super powerful as well. Uh, so let's hold off for the time being, I suppose. Get a bit more money going, and then we'll take a look at the uh, options over here. But on the topic of getting more money going, why don't we go ahead and take a look at Woundheart and consider boosting the allegiance here. It's only 54 Imperium, which is pretty much all of our Imperium. But it means that in two turns' time, we'll have a Pact of Cooperation. Just trying to get them to Vassal status as soon as possible. 
But what if we need that Imperium for something else? Or what? Boost their allegiance. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. All right, we're good. Decline a call to war. Yes, well aware of that. Well aware of that. That's the Forge Father getting upset at us. Goodbye. We only ever have a defensive pack, so nothing I can be too concerned about. Oh, man. I'm a little out of position, to be perfectly honest. I'm a little out of position. What's the worst that could happen? Famous last words. What's the worst that could happen? Very famous last words. So we're going to get called into these wars, I'm sure, pretty, pretty much right away. And at this point in time, if we decline, we're going to be uh, slapped with some serious punishments. The alliance is going to break. That's a big one. Uh, but also, it's considered evil. So now, when we get called to war, we have to say yes. And hopefully, we're in an alright position to actually come out on top. Looks like no one's asked just quite yet. So we have a bit more time, which is promising. That's nice. That's very nice. Allows us to get into position over here. Send you up to Brilliantium. And my lovely... Elder Dragon, Bahadur, let's get you uh, pulling up as well. Up to here, sure. And we'll make our way over. These young fledglings, man, we're going to send them to their doom, aren't we? Over and over and over again, we're going to send them to their doom. Uh, do we have roads over here? We do not. So as we move further along, we'll, we'll build roads as well, just to get uh, more of these spots connected. Up over here, order required. I mean, I guess we could take a peek. Yeah, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. No, no, no. Don't trespass. Cancel that. Stay put over there. I didn't realize that they were all the way out over to here. So, uh, yeah. Stay put. Right at the border there. Stay there. Otherwise, up over here. Orders required. Do I want to dive in and free this up? Hang on. This Marauder Guard is aggressive. We have an army from Alipavar up over here as well. Again, see? These guys are kind of scary. Young Frost Dragon. Young Fire Dragon. I mean... It's, 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 it's a little concerning. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a little concerning. Uh, let's go ahead and pull you up to here, buddy. Let's go ahead and pull you over to here. We're almost topped up as far as health is concerned. It's a low-risk battle. Really? Victory not guaranteed. That's a bit of a surprise. Let's go ahead and get this uh, Wyvern Fledgling brought in. And I wonder if we shouldn't get uh, Burden of Guilt going. Just to... Awesome early damage to an enemy army before we dive in a battle with them, right? It's uh, not too expensive. Takes one turn. Sure, let's uh, let's go for it. Get that queued up. If we're about to dive into some wars, we should get that queued up. Let's dive in. Let's let's do this. Low risk battle. Go for it. Let's auto resolve. See how the AI handles it. And if they don't do a very good job, then we'll dive in ourselves. They've got a bone dragon and a bunch of skeletons. Okay, that bone dragon is kind of scary. Let's see how the AI does. Again, it should, it should be safe. We should be okay. Yeah, we're fine. We don't need to fight this one. Go ahead and close that off. Make some progress, right? Ring of protection. Good stuff. And some uh, production as well. We'll take all that. Thank you very much. And if we take a look at our lovely Taliqua, that ring of protection could come in handy over here. Plus one resistance, plus one defense. I'll absolutely take it. And our economy is looking pretty good right now. So, good stuff. Oh, actually, Taliqua has leveled up. If we take a look down over here, we should have access to quite a few options now. Mending touch is nice. Plus 15 temporary hit points. We've already got restore, but this is obviously a different uh, option, right? Coordinated strike while army leader, battle mage units, range units, and skirmisher units in the army inflict marked with their physical ranged and magic base attacks. Reduces their evasion and stacks up to five times. Twin Awaken we spoke about earlier, Shepard we spoke about earlier, but I think, yes, we're going to go with the added vigor over here. Let's go for it. Confirm that. Try and keep uh, Taliqua alive, especially with the Executioner. She's going to be charging into melee all the time, so want to make sure survivability is looking pretty good over here. So that's good. This this went well for us. Let's make sure we are in friendly territory to heal up as much as possible. You guys able to move? You are indeed. Let's go ahead and get all of you back into friendly territory. Healing up up over there. These guys are looking okay, and these guys are friendly territory as well. So Dondell now has a slightly higher production. What are we going to spend it on? The Light Forge? Not boosted. Not going to spend the Imperium, nor can I afford the Imperium to uh, acquire more territory. Altrop Stash, I guess, is kind of helpful, but against a bunch of flying units, not so much. We could just hold off. We could just hold off, acquire some wealth, or let's secure the vendor that'll pay for itself in six turns. Jeez. We're six turns away from securing a farm. All right, you know what? Let's get the vendor. Sure. Let's get the vendor. I'm not going to hurry it. Because then it's going to pay for itself in 16 turns or 17 turns, which that's a lot. Orders required up over here. You're good to stay put, I think, buddy. Um, I, I guess we could pull you. 
back, keep these guys together. If this stack decides to attack us, I want to make sure we're in an all right position. Should be an okay battle with all of our units all together. Um, I could use our healing spell to help these guys out a little bit. We're not terribly damaged. How much do you actually heal? Army heal does 20 hit points. Okay, let's take a quick look here. You could use 20. You're just uh, just shy. Actually, you could use 20. You could use 20. Be slightly wasted on you. You could use 20. All right, you know what, actually? You know what? I guess it makes sense. Let's send... Let's do a little bit of adjusting over here because it's slightly wasted on this guy, right? So let's pull you back to there. Let's get you three moving into here. And then we can drop the army heal on these guys just in case we get attacked between turns and then we're in trouble, right? So let's go ahead and pop that army heal up over here. Good stuff. Why not? We've got, we've got the magic. We've got the magic. Order required down over here. Keep you pushing up this way to seek out uh, Fangir's situation, right? And Burden of Guilt has been researched. Let's go ahead and pick our next one. Mass Condemnation. Enemies in a one hex radius sustain 10 spirit damage and they become condemned until the end of battle. Reduce status resistance. I like that. Inquisitor's Zeal. Zeal, which makes base attacks deal extra spirit damage, gets applied to our enchanted units. Just the one skirmisher and one ranged unit. That's not all that much in the convent we're ignoring for now. So mass condemnation, it shall be. Let's see what that does for us. As Brilliantium produces its market, meaning we can move on to do what? Recruit more units? Probably a good idea. Let's get that chaplain going that we were talking about previously, right? Just trying to create that third stack slowly but surely. Sunrise in one turn will have another Daylight Spear. That'll be good. We'll build a road if we haven't already. And a new Empire Development skill is available too. What have we got? This. Uh, nature, Empire skill, Soil Tenders, Farms Grant, Extra Food. We don't have the Imperium for it. We will in, what, two turns time? It's a nice one because it helps grow your cities that much faster. So it is tempting. And up over here, Unit Tier 1. Oh, Tier 1 units cost less upkeep. Oh, that's not bad, actually. It's not bad. That could save us a fair bit of money. Something to consider. Something to consider, as I'm pretty sure next turn we're going to be considering a call to war. Again, we can delay our accepting of the call to war, right? That's always an option. Buy ourselves a bit more time before things catch fire. That's probably the smart move. Again, I, I want to be clear. We're not stupid in the name of goodness. It's very important. To distinguish that it's one of those things like on tabletop rpgs if you play sometimes lawful good can get kind of silly kind of goofy kind of stupid that's the important word that's not who we are this should be an easy enough battle let's go ahead and auto resolve this one it's a safe battle if we see losses we'll go ahead and fight it but uh, let the ai decide go for it we should be okay i think yeah perfectly fine took a touch of damage here and there but victory is ours we can go ahead and close that off and uh do I want to shut this nonsense down? Ah, what's this nonsense first? The chairman of the Golden Dawn Council approaches your throne, a wyvern fledgling cuddled within his arms. Wyvern fledglings are magnificent creatures, my elder dragon, the chairman says with a caring smile. Did you know about their hunting techniques? There is so much to learn from bonding with the animals of the wild, and we, the Golden Dawn, nurture all of them with great passion. With this bestiary compendium, the Council wishes to encourage all Golden Dawn to seek out companionship with their kindred animal. Interesting. All life is sacred. The Golden Dawn may embrace the creatures of this realm. What's going on over here? Oh, game decided to freeze on me for a second. That got me a little nervous. All right, it's acting up a little bit, but looks like we're okay here. The Golden Dawn race gains Mark of the Otter. Interesting. Plus one nature affinity. Cities of this race gain plus five city stability for each friendly animal unit within their domain up to a maximum of plus 30. That's like rarely going to happen. Uh, but cities of this race have a negative 20 city stability when there are no friendly animal units within their domain. Wow. Okay. That's kind of wild. I can instead say my wyvern fledgling I give to the council, but more I must forbid. I will lose this wyvern fledgling. The Golden Dawn will gain no new traits. Or I can say that you mustn't forget that the place of animals is below, not among us. Just, again, unity doesn't mean everybody is uh, on, on, on the same level, right? Everything has its place in the order of nature. If you mess with that order, you get chaos. And we are very much about order, not about chaos. We have a bit of chaos in us, a tiny bit, right? Because of our Tome of Evolution and eventually our Tome of Dragons. But our core is uh, 
is is order everything has its place and it needs to be in that place all cities of the golden dawn of your empire that's three of them lose 28 stability for six turns and will gain no new traits so this isn't the optimal pick but like i always say when role playing sometimes you got to make the suboptimal choice just because it makes more sense so you mustn't forget that the place of animals is below not among us good stuff now i'm a little nervous about how much that uh, screen was kind of lagging and tripping out hopefully that's not going to cause us any trouble over here but uh we'll find out We'll find out. Orders required up over here. Right, we've cleared these guys out. What do we want to do? I suppose we should secure the mana node down here. Should be easy enough for us to do. I risk battle because you're a three stack. Let's uh, get you down to here. Get you down to here. And get you popping in. Safe battle. Should be able to auto resolve this one, I think. Oh, hello. Fiend or foe? As your troops engage the group of fiends, it becomes apparent that they had been conjuring a portal to withdraw. The Inferno Puppy, the apparent leader of the gathering, casts a shrewd eye over your army. Seeing that there is scant hope of survival, it beckons its own troops to sit on the ground and submit before following suit itself. It watches you with weary hope. Will you allow them to summon their portal to Obadoth and leave these lands? What is Obadoth? An infernal world ruled by demonic princes, where fiends make the laws and sins are virtuous. Many realms of this world are affected by spells which enhance one's primal urges, which often leads to bloodshed, debauchery, and everything in between. Very few Godir can withstand Obadoth's infernal influence. We could kill them all, that is an evil call. We could ask them to be gone and not return, that's again aligned with our goodness I suppose. Uh, or we could bind the infernal puppy to me. I kind of like that, though, is that in keeping with who we are? Either way, the independent army gets removed. This will cost us some mana, but we've got plenty right now. It is an Inferno Puppy, so uh, it will need leveling up. Uses fire, which is very much in keeping with, uh, with our whole thing. It's elite rank, so very close to being a champion. Well, it's got a long way to go, but if we could make it into a champion... It ties in nicely with the conversation we just had about animals being beneath us. Yes, let us bind the Inferno Puppy to us, leading by example. See, this is acceptable behavior. You couldn't bind another one of uh, the Golden Dawn to you. That's unacceptable behavior. But an Inferno Puppy? Absolutely. Yeah. Go for it. Go ahead and secure some mana. Get the Visor of Farsight as well. Extra defense and plus one vision range for whoever has it. So uh, let's take a look at our lovely Taliqua. The only one who can actually use these things. Get the visor of Farsight on you. Let's go. Only slightly hits our economy when we get rid of that. Sounds good to me. Good stuff. Beautiful stuff. Lovely stuff. This Inferno Puppy is a lone stack. So hopefully we'll be able to add some units here. Three turns for this Chaplain. I mean, if Sunrise keeps recruiting units, we're going to send them down over here, right? Maybe I should bring the Inferno Puppy over here instead. But uh, Sunrise, on the topic of new units. Shall we secure an additional Sun Priest? What have we got in here right now? We got Daylight Spear. Daylight Spear? Sure. Let's get ourselves a Sun Priest, I'm thinking. We've got the Mending Touch, the Twin Awakening, the Mending Awakening, and Spirit Blast. Versus the Chaplain with the Blessings, the Mending Touch, and the Healing Prayer. Hmm. Let's get ourselves... Let's get ourselves... Jeez. The Chaplain, I think. Yeah, sure. We got another one coming through over here anyway. That's fine. I don't mind having a, a few chaplains. This army is going to get a move on. If I could select you, please. Thank you. I was going to build a road, wasn't I? Go ahead and build the road in this direction. Let's go. Meanwhile, Bahadur, you're going to build a road as well. Coming up over here. Sure. Got to take a detour around Rat Pike, but that's fine. Make our way over. Get three stacks over here. Feeling pretty good about that. Up top over here. Uh, let's pull you into... Man, it's all Ashlands. It's all Ashlands. All right, fair enough. I'm, I'm trying to figure out where I could pull to uh, try and heal up. It's going to have to be up top. Fair enough, let's go up top. Not that much healing needed, but why why walk around in a damaged state, right? doesn't make any sense. Now, this is going to help our mana economy, which is good to see. Who else needs clearing out? Anybody? You're just kind of standing here, just chilling, just vibing. All right, fair enough. Down over here, that's our Fireforged Stone. Very well. 
All right, I guess we've cleared out everything we need to clear out over here. We could expand towards this uh, Arcanium Ore now. We could push up to shut down the infestation that's in this area. Might not be a terrible idea if they keep uh, pushing towards Dondel, right? Or we could send these guys down towards the Altar of Destruction so we have a few stacks heading at, in that general direction. Alternatively, we stay put and get ready to deal with this army of Alipavar. A couple of options. Dondel, you're not able to build anything because we can't afford anything right now. But I would like to get some upgrades going over here soon. We'll consider that in a moment. Orders required down over here. You're staying put. That's your order. Your order is to stay put as well. Or... You know what, actually. You know what? If I shift you... Excuse me. That's not what I wanted. I wanted you. There we go. If I bring you over to here, it'll take three turns. Because you move pretty quickly and we have roads. Sure. Let's, uh, let's supplement this stack over here. Make your way over. Let's go. I think two stacks is probably enough over here. Hopefully. We can very quickly eliminate this army. Army power of 917 versus ours of 580 plus 450. Ooh, you know what? That's actually kind of tight. That's not nearly as much in our favor as I would like. Yikes. All right, Sunrise has built its Mint and its Daylight Spear. Dondel got its Vendor. Good stuff. Burden of Guilt is ready to cast. I mean, I don't need that just quite yet. Not at war, right? Could queue up Army Heal. Could queue up Wyvern Fledgling. Um, let's go ahead and queue up Army Heal first, just in case. Burden of Guilt is ready. Thanks for the notification. Heroes willing to join us. Good stuff, good stuff. New Empire Development skill available. Up over here. House Levies. Recruiting units during Rally of the Legions cost 50% less gold. Time between Rally of the Legions is reduced by 5 turns. Now this is where this affinity becomes extremely helpful. Three cities don't matter. Vassals don't matter. I mean, sure, they provide units to Rally of the Legions, but this operates independent of, you know, the specifics there about vassals and free cities and all that good stuff. 350 Imperium, though, it's going to take us, what, like seven turns to acquire that much? Six or so. Um, but when the chance comes, I should definitely take it because the Rally of the Legions is slowly going to grow in strength and size, and I want to make sure I'm able to take advantage of that when the time comes. Actually, on that note, let's take a look at Woundheart over here. How are we looking? Active loyalty in five turns. Boost the Allegiance. 63 Imperium cost. We're fine. We can wait five turns. We're fine. Negotiations succeeded. Bonded vassalage with Killval. Good stuff. Even more gold and mana coming through now. Proceed. If we wanted to trade with them, we could get some mana for gold. Not necessary. I don't want to pay gold. I, I need more gold, if anything. So that's fine. We're good. And more negotiations succeeded. Act of cooperation with uh, Wundhart. Fair enough. Good stuff. Still haven't been called to war, so that's good. Giving us some time to prepare. Don't mind that. Don't mind that at all. Meanwhile, Fangir, what are you up to? I hope you're in trouble. <laughs> I hope you're in trouble. I hope somebody else elim eliminates them so we don't have to. But we should have a conversation with the Grove Tender, potentially, securing that alliance as well. We'll see what Fangir is up to, what their situation is like. But you can see that these three are getting more and more upset at me, and they might just kick off a fresh war themselves. Because they're already at war with all of my other, you know, allies and those I have defensive packs with, so what do they care? But yes, let's go ahead and... Ooh... Balzerkan has built a seed of Astro. Okay, fair enough. My claimed province has been captured. No surprise there. They've secured this mine. I was eyeing that. That's what I was I was hoping to get next. But that's okay. Once we secure uh, the Altar of Destruction, all this will be ours. I think the Altar of Destruction... Ooh. Do we release them as vassals? What's the option there? <laughs> I guess we could, and they'd uh, they'd send us money. So, fair enough. They're, they're, they're tributes, as it were. Still haven't been called to war. Let's take a look at the Grove Tender over here. Can we negotiate an alliance? Still very expensive. Very expensive. Not going to spend that kind of money. Fangir, what are you up to? Still got these alliances. Still at war. How you doing, buddy? You seem to be doing all right. Military ranking 6. Ours is 8. We're still a bottom? Really? Dang. All right, well, let's get our scout creeping on over. And just see what the deal is over here. You're right there. You're right there. Now, this is a little concerning. You've built your little seed over here. And you've built your little seed as well. Fair enough. Orders required up top over here. This puppy is continuing to push towards here. And separately, we need orders over here. Continue to build some roads, please. All the way up to Brilliantium. A different angle of approach, I suppose. The Haunted Halls are tempting, but we need to go in there a couple of times. It's a silver ancient wonder. It provides knowledge and more knowledge and mana. 
if we have heroes in our crypt, but we don't. So it's not really a top priority or anything. It's it's fine as is. Meanwhile, over here, we can push you up to here, sure. Stay within close range of each other. And up top over here, bring you down here. Start building the stack up. Good stuff. You, my good friend, probably pull up to heal. Let's go ahead and check out this watchtower. I think we've already used it. I would have been shocked if we hadn't. Let's get you up to here as well. And yeah, what I might do is uh, invest in destroying this army nice and early. Could get some, like, wyvern fledglings and stuff in place as well, just to supplement our army. And we'll have a chaplain in two turns as well. Alright, good stuff. Orders required up over here, stay put. And over here. Let's poke and prod. Let's poke and prod. If there's more to see if this infestation is close, then maybe we can eliminate it. Dondell, you can build something. We got a decent bit of gold over here. We could help our mana economy, I suppose. We could get a market going. Or we could hang tight for six turns and not build anything. Caltrop stash, perhaps. Arcane battlements. Gives us arcane amplifiers in combat and plus five fortification health. This buys us a bit more time, right? Just buys us a bit more time. 70 gold isn't that much of an investment. Sure. A bit more time, I mean, in terms of uh, when we get attacked, the plus five fortification health might be the difference between five turns and four turns. You know, just that one turn could make a difference. Brilliantium, you're good. I don't think we need anything here. I could get the light forge, I suppose. Increasing our draft, allowing us to recruit a bit more quickly. You know what? Sure. Sure. Army heal is ready. Good stuff. Spells ready to launch. Good stuff. End our turn there. All right. Now I'm starting to grow nervous about not being called into this war. Do you not need me? Do you not feel the uh, the pressure anymore? Maybe not. Feeling left out. It's okay. If they don't call us in, we'll declare the war ourselves, I think. We've got all these stacks coming through. We could hit the Altar of Destruction. It'll take a lot of our time. That's the concern. It'll take a lot of our time. But our other enemies to come would have to go through the Radiant to, to, to get to us, right? So Mascara has built the Seed of Nature. Lots of seeds coming through, all right. Sunrise produced its chaplain, so let's go ahead and bring them down here. As far as we can go, as quickly as we can. And in what? Two turns we'll have this chaplain, fair enough. Sunrise, let's go ahead and recruit something else, because we've got two, three, four. Need two more units. How about we get a Sun Priest, finally? Two turns, 100 gold, not too bad. And uh, then we'll get a fledgling, like a wyvern fledgling or something in there to get us up to six. Cool. Take a look at our spells. We have access to you, so might as well go ahead and pop you in there. Just so we can queue you up again for when we need you. Good to have them ready. Good to have them in our back pocket, right? Otherwise, that's our chaplain, and Sunrise can build something as well. No, it can't, because we can't afford it. Apart from archer battlements, but I don't want that. Good stuff, good stuff. Orders required. Quite a few orders required. We're good to move. Oh, you know what? I forgot about the uh, popper coming through. Whoops. Down over here. Let's go ahead and join up. Where's our scout? You? Keep up this way. And I just want to see where Alipavar's uh, strength has taken him. Meanwhile, up here. North staying put. We're still amassing our forces. You can creep up to here, I suppose. Again, I would like to engage with the Ruins Peak over here. Just to uh, liberate it and hopefully weaken the fortifications of the Altar of Destruction. Up over here. These guys are still creeping up that way. Why? Why would you go there? What is what is over there? Just giving chase over here. I want to see what's happening. Because I wouldn't be surprised if they turned towards this settlement, but they haven't done that. They're still pushing up this way. Otherwise, there's the Seed of Nature. And are you at all interested in negotiating an alliance? Oh, 580 gold. Not about to spend that much. Goodbye. Very well. End the turn there. I keep panning back to the Altar of Destruction. I don't know what that's going to do for me. I don't know what I'm looking for. <laughs> Some indication of how well they're doing, how quickly they're growing. How much stronger they are, I suppose. Much stronger is the is the answer. But all it takes is one good battle. One good battle where we like destroy two or three of their stacks and the balance of, uh, of power shifts immediately. That's all we need. That's all we need. But of course, the first thing we're going to do is... Uh, liberate Ruin's Peak, right? And that could cost us quite a bit. I really hope our vassals at Raghash at least get involved. I really hope they do. Uh, let's go ahead and pull you up to here, sure, as far as you can go. Let's get you down here. Let's go. 
And how long are we waiting? One more turn. All right, and one more turn up there as well. Cool. Feeling pretty good. Where is our little popper? Bring you down here, buddy. Kind of, kind of wasted, truth be told. I could pull this fledgling back, I suppose, or we could try and build a fourth stack. Our economy is looking like it could sustain it. Mass condemnation has been researched. Good stuff. Excellent stuff. Let's go ahead and pick our next tome. Still picking a tier two tome now, right? Just want to double check that we're not a tier three across the board. From Mayhem back to Mayhem. No, we are not at tier three yet. All right, over to our other tome of the beacon now. This divine beacon that we can bring in during combat is 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 is, is pretty good. It, it lasts for three turns. It heals five temporary hit points and gives units plus five morale in a two hex radius around it. That's not a small thing. That's not a small thing. It could really add up. Covenant of the Faith. Units recruited through the Rally of the Lieges have Faithful. Okay. It's a sustained city spell. I'm probably never going to cast it, truth be told. Blessed Reinforcements. Target Vassal Free City gains two Blessed Souls under their control. Again, maybe. Mighty Meek is fun. Plus one Spirit Damage on attacks for each unit here of the target on an enchanted unit. You know, a Tome of the Beacon isn't that great. Lightbringers are probably the most fun item on here, right? Spirit Bolts and Convert. The Tome of the Beacon really isn't that great. Maybe we should consider some of our, uh, our our nature affinity and our chaos affinity. Maybe more nature because chaos is antithetical to order, right? So maybe in, in exploring a bit of nature isn't a problem. Again, with our other run, we just doubled down on our uh, core affinity and just followed that start to finish. Uh, whereas here, we can I think we can explore a little bit. Tome of Glades. Create forest is nice. Adds forest feature to target friendly or unowned province. Doesn't work on mountains, desolate, lava, or ice terrain. Doesn't work on desolate. Damn. But it gives us access to the Entwined Protector, who is extremely capable. That healing sap is very helpful. Very helpful. Aspect of the Root also allows units to uh, heal themselves with the Aspect of the Root ability. Plus 30 HP. And entering defense mode for our shield and polearm units. We have quite a few of those. Quite a few of those. Or there's the Tome of Fertility, giving us the Nymph, who can seduce, revitalize, and use Mending Touch because of our other spells. Blossom of Life is huge. Three stacks of regeneration in a two hex radius. Absolutely massive. Absolutely massive. Restore the land. Oh, hello. Adds grassland features to target friendly provinces. Works on desolate terrain. You know what? I think this is quite uh, symbolic of us bringing order to these ashen lands. Just this spell alone, I think, makes sense for me. Turn all of these uh, horrible, desolate uh, provinces into grasslands. Take advantage of them properly. Allow our troops to heal on them. Right? That's all good stuff. And otherwise, the blossom of life. Little tangential. Not as direct, but uh, very helpful, that's for sure. That's for sure. It's it's really only restore the land that I'm 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 tempted by. Because I don't know if I'll spend too much time summoning nymphs as capable as they are. Animate flora. I mean maybe. It can be helpful. But it, it's it's restore the land and blossom of life. Sure. You know what? Yeah, let's go for it. Let's divert a bit because I don't think the tome of the beacon really makes sense. It it's it's not of any use to us. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I just, I just don't buy it. I just don't buy it. Just don't buy it. Tome of Fertility. Restore this realm. Let's go. Life, I would say, always finds a way. From the depths of the deepest ocean to the crags of the highest mountain. Nature's fertile blessing flourishes and grows. The truly wise will harness this power and sow seeds of growth and healing throughout their lands. Good stuff, good stuff. Restore the land is available right off the bat, so let's go ahead and take that on. I like how our story is uh, evolving over time over here. We're further defining Bahadur and what the uh, the Golden Dawn is all about. Quite, quite enjoying the process. I always enjoy that part of the process. Uh, no surprise over here, there is a risky battle against this Marauder Guard protecting the Arcanium Ore. It'll be some time before we can expand up there, right? We'll have three turns for the next step, and then we'll need one more step, I think, to get up to to get up to there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so it'll be some time, so I don't think we have to risk our lives for that just quite yet. 
And if we do, there's a chance that uh, Bozarkan will uh, will expand in that direction before uh, we do, right? And I don't want to help them. I mean, we're allied, but I don't want to help them that much. Uh, let's keep on poking and prodding up over here. Again, see where these guys are headed while also investigate in the situation up over there. A couple of dangerous marauders over here, it looks like. Or they could just be Alipavar's troops, I suppose. Does he have an underground settlement? It's possible, I suppose. Sunrise? What to build here? Get some arcane battlements going, perhaps? Get the stonemason built? Tavern? We don't... Ooh, actually, you know what? We do need the tavern. We actually do need the tavern. Recent events are a big hit here for the next three turns. When I say big hit, I mean a big negative hit, not a positive hit. That would put us in the clear. So we could hold off, we could invest in the wizard tower instead, increase our Imperium gain, increase our vision range, get that room of recall happening. And uh, perhaps also consider the uh, upgrades to the wizard tower for even more Imperium income. Because it's going to start to get tight eventually gonna start to get tight eventually or there's the bountiful fields extra food extra food and draft from adjacent farms we have a few of those right we have one of those precisely one okay not extremely helpful you yourself count as a farm all right we'll consider our options we'll consider our options let's go with the um geez let's go with nothing Let's go with nothing, let's save up some money, and let's try and get the uh, Town Hall upgraded over here, I think. Get that Pantheon, get access to the Awakener. Yeah, I think that's the right call. Sure. Orders required over here. Hang tight, that's your order. We've accumulated our forces, we've amassed our forces here. Still waiting for a couple units, of course, for this stack. Maybe we go for a fourth stack, we'll see. Down over here, stay put. Down over here. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's explore. Really, you guys basically share a border now. Now, of course, these guys didn't start sharing a border like we did. Uh, again, we weren't literally sharing a border, but we were basically sharing a border. But nonetheless, these guys are so close to each other, but still, no engagement, no damage done to Fangir. Interesting. Maybe because they have a six stack over here. It is what it is. Spell ready. Summon Wyvern Fledgling. All good. Got some spells ready to launch. Anything else we want to queue up? Nothing else we need to queue up. Fair enough. Pretty soon, though. We're going to do a lot of land restoration. Orders required up over here. I mean, jeez. Where to send you, buddy? Stay put. I think it's time to pull these guys back. I think it's time to maybe declare war on Alipavar. Not like immediately just this instant, but uh, soon. Because you look like you might be making a push towards the uh, Altar of Destruction. We're a lot closer. We should be able to get there in two turns time. Bahadur needs to be able to get there, though, to actually get the siege started. I'm just a little concerned because that's a lot of tier ones. <laughs> A lot of tier 1s and 2s. Very few very few higher than that. And we know that Alipavar has, you know, tier 3s on hand, tier 4s as well. How many? Not sure, but even one is scary. Ace berries acquired. Good stuff. Ace berries give us uh, faster founding migration and absorption of cities. Fair enough. That's from one of our vassals, I'm sure. And we could also do a rally. Not really worth it. Not really all that compelling, truth be told. All right see what the AI does. I feel like they have a bit of an upper hand against the Altar of Destruction over here. I also feel like, again, the first order of business is still going to be to take uh, Ruin's Peak and to eliminate that isolated army up top. I want to see if the two red markers that we saw in the Fog of War were supporting armies, because if they were, then that changes the situation a little bit. But if they weren't, then we might be able to, to do something up there. Just got to be careful not to uh, let aggressive marauders hit us, though, obviously. Take a look up over here. Oh, oh, are they friendly? Oh, wow. Did you? You must have. I'm assuming that's what went down there. All right, we can turn our attention back down south. Go ahead and build a road. Um, four, I guess? Yeah. Oh, can't. Right, fair enough. Will you down here then? Then build a road? Let's go. Just to get all this connected eventually. Get you down over here. Let's go. And I guess, yeah, we, we start making a move towards... Uh... Oh, ho, ho, I'm glad I spotted the spell jammer. We're going to want to shut that down on our way over to uh, the Altar of Destruction. So these guys are going to come through. They're going to shut down the spell jammer. And uh, these guys are going to come through. They're going to shut down the Ruins Peak. And then we're going to move in towards the Altar of Destruction. And with a coordinated assault, 
we should be able to pull this off. We should be able to pull this off. We're not that far away now from getting this war started. I'm gonna pull you over there. Gonna hang tight. Just need two more units to make this stack full. We're almost there. Let's get you coming through. And buddy, you're ready up over here as well. Yep, let's pull you down. Next turn, we should be good. And uh, we'll... Uh, I think next turn we might kick off the war. We received a trade proposal. And we see more defensive pacts. Finally, Fangir and uh, the Grove Tender have a defensive pact. Okay, what's this trade proposal? Open borders with Fangir. I mean, I guess I don't see the harm in that. Right? It'll allow us to walk through their territory as well, do a bit of scouting and see what their setup's like. So, sure. It's a deal. It's a deal. I hope I don't regret that. Now, we are getting a little bit stronger. We're military ranking 7 now. Second from the bottom. That's good. Who's 8? Is it you, Alapavar? What do you know? It is. Like I said, all it takes is like one battle. And I think this battle up over here changed the tone of things. So if we want to make a move, we got to make it very soon. we got to make it very soon. Other rulers made a defensive pact. Again, that's Fangir and uh, the Grove Tender. And another ruler started negotiating. What's this now? Vox Sebast the Forge Father has started negotiating with Woundheart. Okay, hang on a second, hang on a second. Woundheart is ours. Don't you dare try anything clever here. Oh no. We're actually way behind. I don't think we had a chance here. Even if we boosted all along, I don't think we had a chance here. We could try. How expensive is it? 27 Imperium? Sure. It'll take two turns to get the Pact of Loyalty. I don't think we'll get the Pact of Vassalage. That really sucks. The first free city we find, and we've been beaten to the punch. We've been beaten to the punch. No surprise there. Up top over here again, we're staying put. I, I guess I could creep down a little bit just to see what's uh, going on. <laughs> Reveals literally nothing. We could head over this way, I suppose. Should have probably built a road just to make it faster for our other uh, forces coming through. You, my good friend, are good to stay put. Yep. Orders required over here. Again, like maybe we consider making a fourth stack or something. And down over here, we are able to move through your lands now. But I want to scout. I want to see what our enemy's up to potentially. Our enemy to be. We've got a mob camp down here. No armies that I'm seeing down south. So they're either all situated over here or they're non-existent. Again, they're they're fairly weak right now, right? Sunrise, what should we produce? Or should we hang tight? Accumulate some more wealth. Feels like the right call right now. Sure. See, the thing about declaring war on um, on Alapavar is that it's not just war on Alapavar, it's war on all of them. And the vast majority of them are better than us in terms of military ranking and all that good stuff. Well, since we can expand, let's just take a quick look over here. We could use three foresters. We could use... Uh, what would give us a good boost to something that we want? Is everything boosted already? The Smith's Guild would give us plus 10 draft and plus 10 food. It's not really that significant. The Monolith requires a conduit, but I don't think we can build one anywhere. We could drop a bunch of fisheries to increase the rate at which we're growing. We could drop a quarry to increase the rate at which we're building. Merchant's Guild requires four farms. How many do we have? We've got one, two... We can get a third here and probably a fourth up there, I assume. Yeah, all right, sure. Let's go with that then. Sunrise, let's expand over here. Still not rushing to build anything, but eventually we'll uh, secure the farm up over there and then we'll chase after our... Uh... Oh, merchants, we already have four farms? Ah, yes, this one. I forgot we extended down to here. Well, in that case, 196 gold, 10 turns. Even with being boosted, really, really let uh, production fall by the wayside, didn't we? You really let production fall by the wayside. Maybe I should invest in the stonemason first then. Sure. Increase our production a little bit, and uh, we'll try and secure some quarries next. And, and, and help Sunrise build faster. Okay. Heroes offer to join. Anybody new? Nope. 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 Ooh, hang on. Yes. Togrok Bloodfeather. Arrogant. Unit has plus three defense and resistance against the attacks of a tier one unit. From Moonheart. Oh. An option, I suppose. It's an option, not one I'm going to take right now. Get some more fledglings coming out. Nah. Mana economy is looking kind of rough right now, so we'll hold off on that. Just wondering about making this uh, full fourth full stack I was talking about, right? But no, not necessary right now. Let's keep an eye on the situation, like, over here, I guess. I just want to see what happens in this general area. Because I feel like the AI is making some serious moves here. 
We just got to make sure we cut them off, you know, before they get too far. That spell jammer needs to go, though. That spell jammer cannot be active when we hit the altar of destruction. Like, when the siege starts, sure. But even then, if the AI decides to swarm us and attack us, you know, before the siege actually ends, that spell jammer could cause us a lot of trouble. So we got to be careful about that. In fact, that spell jammer is going to cause us trouble in the ruins peak as well. It should, at least. So, uh, yeah, something to keep in mind. Something to keep in mind up there. It's day 47 dawns, and we have a thief among us. I love that animation. That is that is fantastic. All right, what do you got for me? There is tumult near your horde, where you store your precious treasures. One of your guards brings a woman of the disciples of the grove tender in front of you. We found this thief trying to steal the boar from your horde, the guard explains. The thief looks up at you with fear in her eyes. She realizes how sacred a thing the horde of a dragon is, and how wrathful dragons are known to be. Having entered your vault, she needs to be punished. Your guard catches your attention by speaking up. Mighty Elder Dragon, what are we to do with the thief? Hmm, we could strip her of her belongings and take what is valuable to my horde. We will gain the ricochet crossbow. That is a powerful piece of equipment. <laughs> tier 3, it's not bad. It would also increase our uh, horde, right? We'll get another tier 3 item. That's 5 more gold per turn. If she values her life, she will enrich my horde instead, just giving me a instant sum of gold. Huh. This is like one of those hilarious, uh, would you rather take $10 million or dinner with X billionaire? You know, would you rather take $10 million right now or a 30 minute meeting with, uh, I don't know, Warren Buffett or something? And, and you get those like, Twitter conversations, oh, I take the 30-minute meeting with Warren Buffett because that's worth more to me than $10 million in hand. And you get the people responding to me like, bro, it's $10 million. With $10 million, you could just, jeez. <laughs> that's what this reminds me of. Anyway, moving on. Hold a ceremony. She shall be sacrificed to our faith. Nope, that is straight up evil. Katrina, the supporter, is moved to the Crypt of Bahadur. Bit of an order boon, apparently. Really? That's a boon? Okay. Yikes. The religion is getting real scary there. Or exile her. She will tell tales of my horde, improving our Imperium. No, you know what? It's for the war effort. It's for the war effort. Earning 5 extra gold per turn would take a lot of turns. 40 turns. 47 turns. No more, actually. To make us this much money. So, uh... 50... What? 50... 52, 50, something like that. Um, 53, 54. 54 turns. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pointless. The ricochet crossbow is nice, but we have the execution and all that stuff, right? So if she values her life, she will enrich my horde instead. Let her go. We do not need to upset the grove tender either. Just give me some money. That'll be your uh, penance, if you want to call it that. Good chunk of change there. Good chunk of change. All right, what else have we got going on? A trade proposal. What's this now? Open borders with Sansevar the Radiant. Sounds good to me. Aren't we already allied? Open borders doesn't come with it. Yeah, sure, it's a deal. Absolutely. Very well. Another trade proposal. Open borders. They have the following offers for us in return. They would give us the mana or the gold? Yeah. Okay, weird. They desperately want open borders here. I'm missing a trick, aren't I? I feel like I'm missing a trick. Why are you willing to part with your gold or your mana for this? And what do I prefer? I think gold. We need to invest in so many things. Our military, our defenses, our production in some cases. Sure, I'll accept the open borders. I'll take the gold. Strange. Very strange. Free city was vassalized, I assume not by us. Yeah. Vassalized by Buzzarkan. With Whispering Stone has returned to you, and you cannot negotiate with Woundheart again while it is vassalized by another ruler. Sucks. Because we were a competitor, we've received some grievances, but I'm not interested in using those grievances. It was worth a shot, right? It was worth a shot. Sunrise, I suppose we could go ahead and give you a Whispering Stone now. Might as well. Might as well. Otherwise, what have we got? Another message received. The Grove Tender is ready to discuss another treaty or diplomatic state. Let's go ahead and negotiate the potential alliance here. 
they want 581 gold. That's why you've taken an interest in us. That's why I also enjoy taking the gold from their thief, because it's almost like symbolic of this constant pressure they've applied. Alright, fair enough. It is what it is. And what it is, is not the time for that. You know what, folks? I think it is the time for us to strike at uh, Alipavar. Let's, uh, let's destroy the Altar of Destruction. Let's secure the Ruin's Peak. Let's uh, hit the Spell Jammer as well. We're not too far away, right? We're like a couple of turns away. So that shouldn't be a problem. And uh, let's try and secure the Altar of Destruction and, you know, vassalize it or, or, or whatever. We'll see how it plays out. But of course, that's going to have to wait until next time, folks. This is where we're calling it a session. I hope you enjoyed this one. No battle this time around because we had a couple of easy ones. I hope you don't mind. I try to keep a battle per episode, but those felt a little too easy. But don't worry. Next time, we're certainly going to see some serious violence and destruction. I hope you enjoyed this session, though, folks. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. As always, let me know what people are enjoying on the channel. Let me know what I should do more or less of and how I should go about doing it. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.